I think I have figured out why a lot of people either really suck at doing recon or why they don't understand how recon works and how to actually leverage your recon data after they run all of these tools. But before we do this, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to drop me a Nahomi comment and say, hey, Nahomi. And also tell me what kind of tools you use before you watch this video, because I want to understand what are you doing as far as recon goes and how can I help with creating that recon process better? But I need you to comment that now. So whatever I say in this video doesn't really influence what you're going to say to me in the comments. So take a moment, drop me your comment, what tools you use, what is your recon workflow like? And maybe I'll comment back and tell you what I think it's good or what you can do to improve. But then watch this video and see if you can do anything different. So the first thing that I do know based on a lot of the chatter that either I see on Twitter or I see on my Discord or on other smaller groups that I'm a part of is that a lot of you think that a lot of these top hackers have these tools that they just type in yahoo.com and it just ding, ding, ding. It just sends you vulnerabilities. And honestly, that's not the case. At least for me, it's not the case. And a lot of the top hackers that I know, that's not the case. And I know there are a lot of hackers that are doing a lot of automation, but I hate to break it to you. It's not just always fully automated. The good bugs aren't being discovered because they're running the same nuclear templates as you are when you go download it from the project discovery GitHub. So with all of that said, here's what I think recon should look like when you want to approach a target in a proper way. So I want to break recon apart into three major categories. So the first category is being the first to find a subdomain before anybody else does. That means you are the first to be alerted as soon as an application or a subdomain is issued or created, you're the first to find it. And it's kind of easy to do that if you have a good tool like Sublist or Amass, all you do is you have it running all the time in the background on your uh, virtual private server or your VPS or whatever you're using, and you have it continuously scanned for the subdomain. And as soon as this application goes up, a domain is up, it uses a mass and it goes into something like uh, a new by Tom Nom Nom. It takes that new domain and uses notify and it sends it to you using Discord or Slack. If you want me to make this process, do me a favor, drop me a comment and say, hey, make a video on using notify. I'll be happy to do that. You just gotta drop me a comment. But if you don't wanna do any of this, in my Discord, actually, there's a link down below. You can go click on my Discord. I have this for a couple of bug bounty programs, I think, like Disney, Hilton, and IBM right now. And if you want some other company, drop me a comment in there, and I got you. So that is like the, the first one, right? The, the subdomain, the company creates a subdomain, it goes up, and bam, you have access to it. Pretty easy. I think a lot of people could do this already, and it's not that bad. But there's also the second approach, which is having to find subdomains or applications that nobody else has found already. These could be based on permutations and different environments, but this one in particularly requires you to have an understanding of how this company uses naming conventions to name the different infrastructures or the different permutations and kind of studying it and then creating word lists and some resources to pretty much find subdomains based on that permutation, for example, staging, uh, dev, QA, and so on. Those are more resource heavy, so you need to have a good workflow for it. But honestly, that's another good way to do better recon because you can probably find documentation that's leaked on a QA site that may not be on prod or just find something that no one else has found. The first two that I mentioned are very similar. One is that it's brand new. You find it as soon as it's launched. The other one has just been sitting around. Nobody else has found, but you managed to find it because you have some good resource or some good word list to brute force the DNS and find that record. Those two are kind of similar, easy to do. I've done a bunch of videos on them. I'll be happy to make them again. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you want it. But there is the third approach, which is what I recommend, especially if you're brand new to bug bounties and if you're brand new to doing this whole bug hunting thing is something that I've always begged everybody that's new to do is just purely saying, screw doing recon and screw doing automation. I'm just going to use something like cert.sh 
type in the domain, find the list of all these different assets, or even do some automation around it with Bash. It's super easy. You just have to go and type in the domain name and pull the common name or the DNS name from it. And then just looking at the naming convention, looking for things like dashboards, customer dashboards, analytics, anything on a subdomain that screams, hey, there is an application here. And if you want to go a step further, you can use like HTTPX and grab the location header and the title and see where is it going. If it's redirecting you to something like a login page, then you know there is some sort of a login registration process that you can get access to this account or this application with an account. Or you can look and see the title of it when it says, hey, login, admin, you know, customer dashboard, whatever it is. This is the best part of doing recon. And there's a step further to this approach. But I think it's the best thing to do if you're brand new to bug bounty hunting because it gives you an application to hack on where you can get better at finding web phones that you may have not been able to find previously or just helps you build your own methodology. This goes a step further with recon and this is the question that everybody wants to know about. What do I do after recon? I've made a video on this, but the best thing to do after recon is genuinely sitting down and finding a big application with different levels of users, for example, when you can have different organizations, for example, or finding some application that has different users, maybe they interact with each other, maybe there's different organizations, whatever that is, finding a big application and either sitting down, making notes of all the different functionalities. For example, you see a file upload, look for things like path traversals, look for different files, extensions that you can upload. Maybe you can do some sort of a file read or SSRF, and just understanding, hey, I see these different functionalities and these are the vulnerabilities that I want to look for. So the upload thing was an example of it. It could be something like messaging that could be on there. Maybe you can do IDOR and read other people's messages. Maybe you can XSS and do store XSS against other users. It's just the arbitrary function and the assumptions that you can make based on the context of the application. Obviously, you can't find an IDOR in like a login page, for example. It might not be something that's super common, but you may find an IDOR in messages where you can load somebody else's message or you can respond to somebody else and so on. So you kind of have to assume, I see this functionality. These are the things that it can do and these are the things that it cannot do and I'm going to make it do just that. The second approach that's more recon heavy is it requires JavaScript. I think I'm going to make a video on JavaScript for hackers or the basics of JavaScript for hackers and what you should learn. Drop me a comment with the word JavaScript if you want that uh, just so I can see how many people want to see that. But it just requires you to open up the source of the browser, go into the web source, look for the JavaScript file, look for something like main .js, app.js, and so on, and going through it and looking for the API endpoints and the different routes, maybe Ajax requests or whatever it is, and see, hey, they're making these different requests. This is the parameter it requires. Just manually going through that process and looking at it. I think the the, the entire thing with recon is everybody thinks that you should run nuclear templates and that's what everybody else does. And let's be honest, if everybody's running the same tools, the same sources and the same nuclear templates, then how does that make you stand out in a crowd of hundreds of thousands of hackers that are looking at these programs, the same bug bounty programs and applications. So I'm not saying that you can't get to a point where you have automated a lot of your work. You absolutely can, but you have to find these vulnerabilities and find this methodology to be able to create your own nuclear template that could automate the workflow of finding particular bugs that are very, very unique to what you're finding in your hacking style. I just really want to make this video because I'm just tired of this weird understanding of like these top hackers run a tool and they find all these amazing vulnerabilities when I know firsthand based on the life hacking events, based on hanging out with some of these hackers, being in different Slack and Discord groups that a lot of the cool bugs, even at these life hacking events, come from manually doing the fuzzing and hacking and all these things that come together after you just collect a small amount of data on your target. All right, that's it. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. We're almost to 100K. We have 100,000 Nahomies. Become a Nahomie so you can also get alerted and notify when I drop a new video every Monday. All right, that's it. See you next week. Peace. Okay, so we're at 93466. It is... July 13th, and he said that by end of August, if we hit 100K, I get to shave him. Oh, we're doing at DEF CON now? By DEF CON, if we hit 100K. You're sh we're shaving your head bald. And my beard. And your beard. That's it. Maybe eyebrows. No eyebrows. No eyebrows, but we're also going to get a Nahomi's tattoo. Possibly. No, if we hit 100K by DEF CON, you're getting a Nahomi's tattoo. 
You heard it here first. We got a month. 